Happy birthday as well. You always find the latest courtyard. Even in solution. In out of the box. Hello and welcome to Radio Waves by Todderbert. If you enjoy reviews, comparisons, band scans of new and classic portable radios, then make sure to subscribe and tap the bell icon so miss any of my most excellent videos. In front of us we have the Sanjin SR36. This is an AM FM portable radio. You can get these for Amazon currently for $28. This one was donated by Lee B, a supporting patron from Patreon. Thank you very much, sir. You're the best. Um, everybody wanted to get me this radio to test, and here it is. So let's check it out. Sanjin SR36. Um, it comes in kind of a flimsy box. I'm not used to that from Sanjin. Uh, we should spend a little extra effort here. Uh, this, yeah, this box is pretty flimsy. You can see it got a little smashed in shipping. Let's see what it says here. SR36 AM FM pocket radio with built-in speaker. I hope that's a thing. <laughs> and a bunch of little bullet points. On the back, we got a picture of the radio. Get us up to focus here. A few more bullet points. There you go. Superb sound and reception. Well, we'll talk about that. And some little codes there. Okay, so let's go ahead and open this up and see what we get in the box. All right. So my tray. Okay. Now I got this day one. These were back ordered, I think, till September 1st, 2020. And uh, yeah, somebody, uh, Mr. Lee, he decided he was going to support the channel by giving a radio. So let's go ahead and see what we got here. Put that thing aside. There's a little carrier that comes in. Now it sits in there loose, um, as you can see. And the problem with this is that flimsy container, this thing bounces around and the front gets scratched. So I got scratches on my brand new radio. It's kind of annoying because I didn't even use a little protector over that. So Sanjin, if you're watching, um, why don't you, if you're going to put in a cheap packaging, at least protect your high gloss finish there from scratching. But yeah, that was annoying. So okay, let's go ahead and move that out of there. So let's go over the paperwork. Let's see. I know I saw a warranty card. Here we go. We're going to lower this down. So Sanjin includes a warranty for the little radio here. Uh, 90 days typical for the inexpensive radios. And uh, like the SR35, um, you'll see that with the smaller radios. There it is, 90 days. Okay. Uh, next we have our instruction manual, which is pretty basic. This is a very simple radio to operate. Um, key elements. I'll talk about those. Again, pretty simple setup. Let's just get to the spec page right here. Uh, what it runs on, 2AA batteries. There's the frequency ranges. There's the size of the speaker. I'll put power. Um, it actually sounds pretty good for that uh, power there. Uh, has a headphone socket, which I'll talk about. It says mono. It's not stereo, unfortunately. And I wish it was. That'd be really awesome if this was a stereo radio. It would really redeem its qualities here. We'll get into that. Okay, so that's it. We'll talk about it. So let's get the radio front and center. Here it is. Uh, maybe I'll zoom down a little further. And we'll probably bring it up when I start comparing it to other radios. So the SR36 dimensions, um, I'm including the tuning knobs here, were 5 and an eighth of an inch, 5 and 1 of an inch across. Or two and five eighths of an inch tall, and have a case depth of one and one eighth of an inch. It includes this back antenna that sticks out a bit in the back there. Uh, so for size comparison, I'll bring in a CC pocket, give you an idea. Thickness, yeah. So right away you can see this, this tabletop form factor. Um, if you hold it like this, kind of reminds me of the size of the SR35. Uh, if you guys know that one, I'm sure you have seen that video next we have cc skywave so that's about the size of a cc skywave if you look at it yep about the same oh cool the sanjin on top sweet and of course last but not least we have a deck of cards iron man he's the man with the master plan he loves sanjin radios from china land he's iron man yeah rocking all right <laughs> um so yeah there's competition in the space for this radio, believe it or not. This is a DSP radio, digital signal processor. Uh, so it's not analog as far as analog is concerned. When you tune it, it'll tune in steps. Uh, though the AM band tends to shuffle more, doesn't have, a, it kind of a, reduces the stepping noise, which you'll get to hear. But uh, yeah, here's this competition right here. The Sony P36. So there you go. Put those side by side. Um, and I'll be honest with you right now off the get-go, 
this is a better radio. <laughs> and I'll explain some of the reasons why I say that. I know it doesn't have the expanded band, but it will go to 1640 on the uh, AM band. It's a little thicker, as you can see there. And the antenna on the back really hinders pocket capability. This has more pocket friendly. But uh, there's a reason why I like this a lot more. I'll talk about that and show those things to you. So there you are. And of course, another one I brought out. I should probably show you. This is a Sony 306. <laughs> Definitely a bigger radio. But the reason why I'm showing you these radios is that this 36 is 35 bucks. This little sand gin here is 30 right now. So this has got to come down a lot in price um, because these, these other radios are fairly competitive. This sounds really good, by the way. And it runs 100 hours on two AA batteries. Pretty sweet. All right. So let's go ahead and talk about features of the SR36. Everybody's excited about this radio. It's new. It's fresh. Everybody's like, yay. Uh, as you can see, they went with a matte finish here, and they still kept with the glossy finish on the dial area. Don't know why they did that, but they did. Uh, let's see. Left-hand side, um, dust from the container. Um, there's a spot for a lanyard. They did not include a lanyard. Sony does. Plus for Sony. Um, simple plastics. Here we have a two and a quarter inch speaker per the uh, specifications in the manual we just looked at. Our dial indicator, as you can see, is a clear window with a nice orange indicator. I do like that. Though they offset it from the numbers, um, it's easy to see where you're at in AM, but when it goes to FM, you're trying to really draw that line across. It gets a little bit harder, but just to let you know, FM is fairly accurate. Okay, I didn't check the AM, but I'm, we're going to do it tonight. Up here we have a green LED, so when your radio is in tune, that LED will light up. Nice setup. Um, over here on the right-hand side gets interesting. What a cool thing. I do like the idea of both knobs being on the side. Sony needs to learn that from Sanjin because <laughs> these are great. Uh, down here we have a headphone jack. So headphone experience. I like to talk about what they sound like. I, I told uh, The manual says it's mono, both ears. It is. There's no FM stereo. But it sounds great. There's no low-level hiss. It has nice lows, strong mids, and clear highs on FM. A medium wave... Um, it's a little different. I heard some like uh, noises, like internal generated noise a little bit. And I heard uh, on the faint stations and strong stations, there's a snap, crackle, pop. And we'll get to that because it's also on the speaker. It's the DSP, similar to the Retecus 604 that I reviewed. And a few others, these newer generation DSPs, there's something wrong with the medium wave, how it's handling the circuit. And maybe I'll get to demonstrate that popping sound in that speaker. It's very annoying, especially in a clear, strong station. You don't expect that. You don't get that with these radios. These don't snap, crackle, pop. These are fine. All analog. So, okay, top of the radio, we have band selector, AM, FM. We have an antenna here. Our antenna is 17 and 3 quarter inches, and it swivels. And there's a little spot there where it can swivel past, too, which is pretty neat. I like that. If you notice, this cabinet is slightly curved. It's just ever so slightly curved. Okay. On the back here, uh, it says Sanjin the frequency and runs on two AA batteries, which I will show you because everybody likes to see the batteries. There we go. Hinge battery door. That's a plus, like Sony does. And I got two AA batteries. I'm using EBL 2800 high capacities. These are great batteries, by the way. I use them in all my radios now. Loving them. Uh, polarity. Okay, top battery here. Positive is to the right. Uh, bottom battery, the positive is to the left. Okay, so people need to know that. There you go. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and close that up. And uh, let's see. We're going to talk about FM reception report. Then we're going to do a little audio check. And then we'll cruise the AM band tonight and hear what we can hear. So uh, FM reception. I take this upstairs around 2 in the afternoon. Antenna's up. I make sure there's no tropo or e-skipping going on to affect the signal. So it's fair with all radios. Uh, this uh, I go on a basis of five-tier Fair, okay, good, very good, excellent. Uh, this radio here being a DSP, you would tend to be good, and it is. This found 65 stations, which solidly puts it in a good category. When you compare it to this Sony here, I believe this was like an upper 50s or just right around maybe lower 50s, and this gets around an okay to good rating. Not a bad FM radio, just this is better on FM. Just letting you know. But it changes when things get to the medium wave, and we'll talk about that. So FM, yeah, so it gets good on FM sensitivity, and FM selectivity also gets good. Um, this is actually really easy to tune as far as staying on station. We'll talk about these knobs here. Um, well, yeah, I should have told you when I showed them to you. Um, there's a stiffness to them, probably because it's new, but uh, when you're turning this uh, tuning knob, it's really hard to turn. And it's even harder as you get to the top of the band. And I noticed a little bit of backlash with the tuning knob, so you'll get that same 
but uh, overall FM is good on this radio and it sounds great. There's no snap, crackle, pop because that's only on the AM circuit. But for an FM radio with the headphones or with the speaker, it's just it's a great little radio. I'm loving that. So let's go ahead and turn it on and then uh, we'll talk about the medium wave when I'm done with the little demo. So what I like to do is I run, uh, I'll go ahead and turn everything on here. I got a little MP3 player and I have a FM transmitter too. Like to use, I got tuned to 92.9 megahertz and it's broadcasting. You see a little broadcast light here, a uh, little tiny antenna uh, broadcasting some YouTube royalty free music so I can play music on the radio without any issues. So this video doesn't get banned from certain countries. So let's go ahead and turn it on. Tuning light. I'll run this demo for a minute or two. audio demo on the FM. Like I said, the FM is fantastic. Um, and the volume control is really cool. Uh, like I said, no low level hiss on the headphones and it gets really low and nice to listen to. So you can listen to your uh, headphones really quietly too, which is nice. Um, and this volume control is stiff. So I guess that's nice. So like where you adjust it is where it's going to stay. You can't accidentally bump it. And it is nice having both knobs right there. Do enjoy that. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn this off here. Let's talk about the medium wave and where this radio falls short. Yes, I said falls short, unfortunately. Um, so the SR36, uh, I checked this out during the day, and uh, like I said, remember I was telling you about the headphones, internal buzzing and popping. Well, the popping is a problem, especially on strong stations. I just can't deal with that. It just bugs me <laughs> to no end to have a brand new radio doing that. Uh, they should have thought that ahead. They should have tested this radio. And I think when they watch this video, hopefully they'll make the changes. Uh, because they're not going to sell this radio for 30 bucks after this video. There's just no way. This radio is like a $15 radio out of the box. There's some $10 DSP radios or even that same radio. I think it's an HDI. I prefer sale for like, I think it was like $6.99. That even will beat it on the AM band. Um, just amazing. So they need to be, they need to fix that to be competitive with this form factor. Otherwise, this is just not gonna sell for them. I'm um, just being straight up and honest. Um, but uh, again, options, I'm gonna put options down below here. If you really like this radio on FM, get it. I mean, I will tell you this, it's worth an FM. You will ha be very happy. But if you're one of these people who say, hey, I have an AM band, I wanna use it, you're not gonna be as happy. But uh, yeah, definitely gonna put a plug in for the P36 here. Uh, same price as this radio. 
And yeah, the speaker maybe not be as bassy as this. This one, this one has a little bit better speaker, of course. This one has an amazing uh, medium wave reception, and I would recommend this if you like this tabletop form factor uh, for AM listening. Definitely the way to go. Uh, but yet again, I got to do the little plugs because otherwise you guys won't know. And I'll put the little links there, so yeah, check it out. And if you want a little bigger radio, you can always run into the 306 here. This bigger monster. It's got a bigger speaker. Loving this radio. Again, it's got the similar 16. Uh, Stops at 1640, um, says 1710, but I don't listen, usually listen to that high. Some people do, but I'll let you know. This one's like, like I said, $5 more than that. So it just depends on what you want. So we're going to go ahead and turn us on the medium wave band. We're going to do a little band scan. Try to exhibit that popping sound. Let's start at the bottom here. We'll tune it around and see how we see what we hear. You can hear how this thing tunes. Cuts in and out. That's a pretty good reception. CHLO, Brampton, Ontario on 530, which is about 441 miles. 250 watts. But as you can tell, it has a hard time staying on active. But I bet you if you put a passive loop to it, it might stay. So let's go grab a passive loop. Got it off to the side. Got to run away from the camera. <laughs> I'm going to bring a Turk in see if that makes a difference from that cutting in and out. So we'll go perpendicular to where I think the antenna is. Light came on. A little bit of popping sound because the gain's increased. That's that popping you'll hear on stronger stations. It's very annoying. Okay. How many different servings of fruit have you eaten today? How many servings of vegetables? And sorry, Dad, French fries and ketchup don't count. The experts recommend eating over 10 servings of fruits and vegetables each day. That's where Balance this of is, uh, Nature This is 560 WIND, when a local station, Chicago. Capsules, Balance of Nature gives you, you that popping and crackling. Servings. And it's a time. 31 different fruits and vegetables. 10, 17 right now, Balance PM. Of Nature is offering free shipping and okay, so you hear that? <clears throat> order of and let's uh, compare it. Let's just bring in the, this radio and... Uh, Let's go bring it down to the bottom of the band and pick up that same station, see if we hear any of that popping. We shouldn't. Balance of nature. Changing the world one life at a time. I have food allergies. I have spring, fall, winter, summer allergies. I've been taking allergy shots off and on my since I was six months old. And my eyes run so, so there you go, no popping. Uh, loving that radio. I'm just gonna leave that there in case you want to bring it back out. Good for comparison. And the only thing I've done different is, is the balance of nature. So I really think it's helping my allergies a lot. And I'm thrilled because it's miserable. You put your makeup on. I know DSP's cut in and out, but the way this one does it. It's uh, annoying. Again, I think like the 604 does it. There's another Retechus radio. That shortwave one I recently did. Yeah, does the same thing. Just falls short on the medium wave. I don't know what chip manufacturer you're using, but you guys got to change it up. Sanjin, you guys know better because your radios are awesome. Just don't get it. So it's some long distance stations. It's a challenge. Can't even figure out where we're at. Okay, so I hear country music. I think that's 630. Uh, I have the Skywave here. It uses a frequency checker. And uh, it lets me go direct entry to the station, which is nice. So I think that's that. on 6.50 a.m. WSM and on the World Wide Web at WSMOnline.com.
So here's a 650 WSM, Nashville, Tennessee. If you love traditional country music performed live and popping up, now, it's not static from lightning. And neighbors with yours truly, Chris Scruggs. So tune it in and turn it up. 434 miles. Springer Mountain Farms Plus. Always great care and great experience and taste the difference. Hitting slow breaking balls and change ups and just working on the mechanics of his swing. This being get one of them slow breaking balls and hit it into the bleachers. The outfield is very deep for Rizzo, who takes a strike. 670 to score, WCR, Chicago. Chicago Land's new car dealers are leading the. As I say that, think of what the Reds have gotten when they've had to turn to TJ. Here's WLW 700, Cincinnati, Ohio, 300 miles. Um, Tyler Malley has been a little bit hit or miss, but Tyler Malley pitched three consecutive games against. Sox, six runs on 12 hits, no errors, and eight men left. For the Twins, two runs on four hits, one error, and six men left. When he pitcher Dane Dunning, he's now 2-0. Oh. Randy Dobnik takes the loss. He falls to 6-4. Three hours and four minutes of baseball here at Guaranteed Rate Field tonight. As you drive home, I'm not popping it severely, but today, during the day, it was really bad. Is a matter of life 720 death. WGN, Next Chicago. Will come your way tomorrow night, 635 of the pregame show, 710 your first pitch, game three of this four-game series. Lucas Giolito will go here for the White Sox. Against the pitcher, it screams as though they were the burden of some other. Oh, you've seen that. I will tell you the speaker is nice. Uh, CFZM 740, Toronto, Ontario, uh, 460 miles. <clears throat> and he wants to trade the game. Ask yourself, do you have enough food and supplies on hand to last at least 30 days? Most Americans do not, but you can. Avoid the panic of the last-minute rush. Order your four-week supply of emergency food today from MyPatriotSupply.com. Okay, that's 760 WGR Detroit, Michigan, 270 miles. Let's tune it up with the Sony here. Volume. That was a line drive. Line drive. You can tell you. By Wing Trust, Chicago's... Ship discreetly to your so what do you see? Buy a riverfront dock. You know what's coming. They're using today to prepare. There's time for you to do the same. That's MyPatriotSupply.com. The original Patriot Prepared. MyPatriotSupply.com. And for sale online at Amazon, Apple iTunes, and other outlets. They handle all aspects of the publishing. So as you can hear, no snap, crackle, pot there. Pot. <laughs> Pop. Free author submission kit. That's 800-501-3689 for your free. I charge just left on major corporate customers who had little choice but to pay them. Demand for its creative software sent revenue at Adobe past analyst estimates. Sales jumped 14% from a year ago. 780 WBBM Chicago. Including Photoshop saw a 19% sales gain. Kohl's is cutting its corporate workforce. As great of a player that we... When he woke up, NBC News. He's not a... But he's not that kind of leader that God's going to say, let's run. In deciding somewhat the ballgame or combination of increased urgency and great difficulty in identifying civil life forms has given rise to at least... One new way of thinking about Here's 840 WHAS, Louisville, Kentucky, 300 miles. And, and of course, science is doing something. Uh, most science, the nature of, you know, of what's going on up in, up in the space. The dial scale looks a little off there. And there are many lines of thinking with regard to what is out there. And science, of course, is doing something the media and politicians will tell you never happens. They are embracing uncertainty and they're going on faith and they're discussing this. This is what science is. This is about how the impossible becomes or maybe not. possible. If 800 is that bottom line there, then we are probably dead on. Okay. On questions relevant to the goals of finding bioscience. That's critical. It's a critical part. CJBC 860, Toronto, Ontario. <laughs> walking graves sur solo recordings volume 3. I don't know 
Paint station cutting in and out. Uh, 870 to BWL, I think. Okay, this might be 890. I'm here in the ring, and it's usually uh, WLS 890 Chicago. We're almost done here. Just doing a little demo so you get an idea what the AM band's like. It's painful. This is not how you really hunt snipe. I know, because my dad has been snipe hunting and he's told me, and, and we've got pictures. Okay, here's 1100, WTAM, Cleveland, Ohio. A little bit of crackling. The Indians play the infield at double play depth. Whitgren's ready. And um, so we, uh, people expect uh, the police to do. So, w what changes do you think are necessary to policing, if any? Well, sir, think about this. They keep trying to tell everybody that this mail-in voting thing is <laughs> Can we go up to the top of the band? Backlash now. You can kind of see it when I turn it and I let go. Everything detecting, removing, and repairing graffiti damage has been estimated as high as 15 to 18 billion dollars. That's an average year. Okay, so you get the general idea. So let's go ahead and just show you what the P26 sounds like, uh, just because we're on the same video here. Go ahead and we'll. Volumes over here, I forget. Membership from Jack's Car Wash. Text keyword car wash to 800 and 105.9 FM. Skies remaining uh, most. The hunting and fishing, dog training will give you tips, pass along stories, and most important, share some laughs along the way. Just like we're doing right now, so this is in the spot scene. Big, big, big. The man in the band for good times, all natural. Who is the coach? That you can't even get at the post There's a moment in the film um, where Clive is asking a scientist about for research. And then in the midst of, of, of this burner, there's some DraftKings, a casino queen sports book, is giving all Café de Manga. Je suis des Etats Unis et du Vion too. Your video is the man for this time. He's the most competitive, toughest player and smartest player I may ever manage. And my respect level for him is through the roof. Okay, well, there you go. That's just a little demo showing you the P36. Okay, so here it is now. Uh, we'll do final thoughts. Uh, the SR36, a lot needs to change to make this radio perfect. One, I'd like to see protective something element over this or just go all matte finish because this shininess just got scratched. I mean, look at this. My Sony is not scratched. It's like a mirror. This engine, this is all scratches there. That's not something I can wipe off. You know, it's just really, just a very annoying thing. Um, so if they could fix that, put a little protective coating on it or change their packaging, you know, come in a blister pack, uh, that'd be nice. Um, I do like the indicator. I do think that's nice. Um, tuning LED is nice. This has it too, of course. And this has a battery status indicator, which I like. Um, the Sony. Uh, but yeah, it's just uh, the medium wave falls short. I mean, if you like that kind of tuning on medium wave, then go ahead and get this. But for 30 bucks, and if you want a table form factor, just get the Sony. Get the P36. I'll have links below. 
But this is the better radio, even though it's not a DSP. Some people love the fact that it's not a DSP. I will tell you, DSPs do rock it on FM, and this thing is amazing on FM. Um, it's a, I just love the sound, and it's a great radio on FM. I will not knock that. That's its strong selling point. But for $30, just get the SR35. That's $20. Well, why? It's got the same probably DSP chip as far as FM goes. AM is actually better, I would say, even with the popping on the SR35s. SR35 is a better experience versus this because I hate hearing snap, crackle, pop coming out of the speaker on a strong station. It just that just irks me to no end. Uh, you saw how smooth this sounded on the AM band. Just fantastic. So it's got to plug that real quick for you. So as it sits, should you go out and run out and buy the SR36? No. If this radio drops to $15, should you run out and buy this radio? Maybe. Think about it. $15, maybe. Uh, fantastic sound. Earphone jack is nice. So the controls are pretty decent as far as being on the side like that. I do like that setup. I mean, it's smart design. I like the design. Uh, for $15, bucks, yeah, it's a great radio. But for, for $30, no, not a buy. <laughs> so there you are. Hope you enjoyed the video presentation of the SR36. Um, and now you know, and you don't have to waste your money, and you get something get something more fun. I mean, just grab, grab the Sony. <laughs> I'm a Sony fanboy, but I mean, you have to see them side by side. You can make the choice yourself. Uh, of course, too, if you like Sanjin radios, new radios, old radios, you want to see reviews of them, make sure to hit subscribe at the bell icon uh, of reviews and band scans. And of course, comment below what you think about the SR36 in action. Would this be a radio you run out and buy right now? Would you wait and see? Probably do a wait and see. Since I got the first version, I expected some bugs, and there are bugs here, and I'm hoping that Sanjin watches this video and takes it to heart and fixes those issues. If they do, they got my support. Uh, make it FM stereo? Yes. Protect the radio from scratches in the container? Yes. Uh, improve that AM band and you got yourself a winner. If you can do that, um, rock out. <laughs> Definitely. And just pick up some of those cheap Chinese radios, those little cheap DSPs. They know how to do it for some reason. You know, I'm talking like these... Uh, these ten dollar Sonra thing that just rocks on a DSP. I mean, it's just like what? <laughs> this is tabletop form factor, uh, but yeah, it's just uh, one of those things where you just gotta they gotta look around. Here I'm rambling. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for watching. Take care, and we'll see you in the next video.